Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Journey Home Podcast, and today I am continuing in our series, Advice to My Younger Self. The advice that I'm sharing today is this, don't run from your pain. Don't run from your pain. Boy, I wish I had this advice or listened to this advice when I was younger, um, but as all of us probably know we live in a fallen world and tragically as as one of the results of living in a fallen world is that um, we are all going to experience a measure of pain um, in this life we are going to be hurt um, and the thing is we you know while on the one hand we have all sinned and we all have fallen short of the glory of god and so we all need the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness of God. Um, but at the same time, each one of us has been sinned against as well. We're at the, we're at the same time, we're, you know, we're both the villain and the victim in this story, right? And so um, every single one of us um, will have been sinned against in some way um, throughout the course of our lives. Some of us in really tragic, um, traumatic ways, abusive ways. Um, and how we process that pain is really going to have a uh, dramatic impact on our lives. You know, it's going to affect everything. It's going to affect our relationships. It's going to affect our physical, mental, you know, emotional, spiritual well-being. It's going to affect so many things, how we lead, how we minister, how we work, you know. And um, so it's really important that we all... Uh, you know, are able to rightly and uh, process pain in a healthy way. Um, so for me, I did not grow up with a great um, deal of emotional literacy, I guess is the way I would say it, because um, I think I felt emotions for sure, but I didn't really have awareness of it or language. I didn't know that I should, honestly. And um you know, I probably had at least three things working against me, um, perhaps more than this. But number one, I, I'm Asian, uh, specifically I'm Korean. And so um, in my opinion, Koreans are not necessarily uh, the most emotionally aware people or emotionally healthy people. Maybe every ethnic group would say that. But, um, you know, I just don't recall um, a lot of emotional awareness um, in my uh, ethnic community, if I can say it that way. Okay, so that's one, I guess, thing working against me. Number two, um, I'm a male, which, again, in my, I guess, at the time that I was growing up, I, it could be different now. But, um, you know, I think the messages that I internalized were that, you know, a man should not be too emotional, shouldn't express emotion, um, you know, things like that. And so, you know, that didn't help. And then, um, you know, the churches that I grew up in, um, as I mean, maybe I wasn't paying attention, but as far as I can recall, I don't remember a lot uh, being said about um, our emotions and what God has to say about our emotions or how to handle our emotions. So, again, it's very possible that it, they were teaching that and I just had no recollection of it or I wasn't paying attention but as far as I can recall I don't uh, remember any teaching on you know healthy emotional spirituality or anything like that okay so um, I think as a result of those things I grew up and probably not even aware that I was doing this but you know either denying my pain or um, stuffing it down or or like I said just un even unaware of it you know like meaning I know something's wrong, I know something's there, but I wouldn't have known to uh, what to call it or how to articulate it. And so, um, you know, that definitely affected the kind of person that I was. It definitely affected how I related to people. Um, you know, just to give you some examples, like I think it caused me to be incredibly insecure um, because my whole, you know, from the earliest memories that I have, I, I can remember feeling these feelings of shame, incredible shame. And I didn't have language even to articulate that until much later in life. But I always felt that something was wrong with me. I always felt that I was inadequate in some way or just in 
sufficient or some way or just fundamentally flawed in some way, which um, really are just different ways of saying that I felt shame. And so I think that caused me to be incredibly insecure as a young person. I just needed a tremendous amount of validation, um, I think, you know, which in itself is not um, an, uh, an illegitimate human need. But I think the way that I needed it was a little overboard. Um, I remember one time, you know, I was on a youth group missions trip and, you know, we had our whole like outreach program where we would sing a few songs and then we would perform a drama and then um, our pastor would get up and preach a sermon. And so um, I just remember like before, you know, on one of these trips, you know, we were getting ready for our first big outreach and, you know, we're on the team bus just getting ready to to go out and get started. And I remember, um, you know, we asked someone to lead us in prayer and they prayed for the drama team they prayed for the preacher but they didn't pray for me and i was the one leading worship and you know i think for the average person that shouldn't be too big a deal like yeah you might be like hey you should have prayed for me too i would have really liked that you know but like for me it caused me to like emotionally unravel like i was weeping on the bus and i think my pastor was really concerned he was like why what's wrong why are you so upset and it's because again like i said i was so incredibly insecure that um you know just that person neglecting to mention me in their prayer um, you know, just set me off, you know, like it was, it was pretty embarrassing, um, you know, when I look back, but I think it just showed how insecure I was, you know, so that's, that's one thing, um, one result of me kind of being unaware of my emotions and, and things like that. Um, one result of that, um, another one is that I needed constant validation. Oh, another way that I found, validation was that I was I was that guy who kind of always needed to have a girlfriend if that makes sense and so it wasn't you know because I knew how to love someone well or care for someone well you know it was more about me it was very selfish now at the time I didn't realize that I thought you know I just like someone and that's why I wanted to date them but like when I look back I realize how incredibly selfish it was and I think because it was um for the most part, self-serving, you know, I, I did end up hurting a lot of people um, along the way because, you know, those weren't healthy relationships that I was in because, you know, at the end of the day, I think subconsciously I was pursuing them to get some kind of validation as well. So, um, you know, and again, it's, you know, this is all with much hindsight and reflection. I, I had no clue at the time that this is what was going on inside me. Um, and then, you know, later on in my life, um, I began to recognize this third pattern where, um, you know, in a conflict or, you know, some or that a kind of uh, intense situation, um, you know, I have this tendency to shut down, you know, just totally shut down and walk away and shut the other person out. And I remember my poor wife, you know, like in the early days of our marriage, especially that was so confusing to her, like, she really didn't understand why I just couldn't talk things through and I just didn't have that ability but not only did I not have the ability to work out the conflict I didn't have the ability to even uh, recognize what I was feeling in the moment and you know I, I guess for some people that's not necessarily even wrong sometimes we just need a little space and we need to cool down a little before we can you know name our emotions or whatever but again because I didn't really grow up with healthy um, paradigms or understanding of how to navigate emotions you know I had lots of strange you know habits and patterns you know and so those are just three examples um, from my own life and I'm sure you can think of some from your own life um, but there's a saying and perhaps you've heard it that um, hurt people hurt people and you know that's not a scripture to be sure but um, I think there's a lot of truth in that statement and i have found it to be true over and over again um, in my life and in my observation of of other people and serving in ministry you know over the years i've just seen that pattern uh prove to be true and you know another way of saying that is that if we don't find healthy ways of dealing with our own pain it will come out in some way it's gonna come out one way or the other right and most of the time it ends up hurting those around us 
sadly, it, you know, most of the time, it's the ones that we love the most that we end up hurting the most. Um, you know, when we again, when we have not properly dealt with our own pain. And, um, and now here's where it can get confusing those uh, for those who are Christians or who have grown up in the church. Um, because in my observation, the church has a very um, complicated relationship with emotions, um, if I can say it that way, um, depending what kind of, you know, church you grew up in or how you were taught, how you were discipled. You know, I think there's some Christians that really, at the end of the day, live in denial of their emotions. Um, if I can be honest, you know, like I think. I don't even know necessarily why that is. I, maybe for some, they, they want to believe that our pain, you know, is all dealt with at the cross, you know, from the moment we're born again, like that's all gone. And of course, like there's some truth to that. Like we are a new creation. You know, there's a lot that the Lord deals with um, instantly in our lives. And a lot of times there's there's healing that comes. There's restoration that comes, you know, and I'm not denying that. And just to be clear, like, I totally believe in miracles. I totally believe that there are some things that the Lord will um, heal or deal with, like, in an instant, in a moment. I totally believe he can do that. And there are times when he does do that. But, um, you know, I've also observed that there are other things that he doesn't deal with instantly there are some things that he wants to take us through a process with a process of healing, a journey of healing. And, and just as a side note, I believe that um, both ways are totally valid. They're still totally God. Um, and I think that honestly, he has a purpose for even the way that he chooses to heal us. Sometimes, you know, sometimes there's things that we gain in the process of going on a journey of healing that we wouldn't gain um if he just healed it instantly, of course, you know, all of us, I'm sure would just love the Lord to just fix everything in a moment, in an instant and just be done with it forever. Um, but sorry to break it to you, friends, but in my experience, it doesn't always work that way. But my point is to encourage you is that it's not a bad thing if he doesn't deal with everything instantly, if he doesn't heal everything instantly. There is a... Uh, a method to his madness, if you, if I can say it that way. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think some a lot of Christians are just in denial about their pain. Um, I think some Christians even have a um, belief that, you know, it's almost as if they believe that admitting any pain of any kind almost makes you less of a Christian in some weird way. Like, you know, oh, if you were stronger, you wouldn't feel that, you know, it's almost as if we believe that, you know, our picture of an ideal Christian is almost like this weird superhero that never feels, never gets hurt. Like you can't hurt me. You know, I'm so strong that I can't be hurt, you know, physically or emotionally or whatever. And I think that's just a false belief to begin with. But that kind of thinking can really also lead us to denial of our pain or at the very least hiding it um, because we feel embarrassed, you know, even though we shouldn't, but we do. Um, we mi maybe will minimize our pain or, you know, some other, you know, unhealthy way of, of dealing with our pain. OK, um, I know there's some Christians out there who you, they even equate like feeling any negative emotion or any kind of pain as as sin, you know, <laughs> like, like if you get, if you feel hurt, you're sinning, or if you get angry, you're sinning, you know, like, and I think we, we really have to be careful there. Um, because the Bible says, says this, you know, in your anger, don't sin or be angry, but sin not or don't sin so it's clearly not the anger that is the problem feeling anger in and of itself is not a sin you know feeling pain is not a sin feeling sadness or even feeling a little depressed is not a sin in itself but in that anger or in that pain we can it can lead us to sin um, which is my you know another way i would say that is just we can deal with it in an unhealthy manner, right? So 
de- it de- you know emotional pain um negative emotions it can definitely lead us to sin but in and of itself i don't believe it's sin um but you know i just wanted to say that because to hear some christians talk some pastors even what they teach um you know it sure sounds like they believe that and i just don't think that's true i think that's actually very dangerous i think there's a part of us that's afraid of letting our emotions out or delving into our pain because we think it can lead us to a very bad place which i can't deny that it's possible so there are dangers um involved in you know dealing with our pain for sure but honestly i think it's far more dangerous to just ignore or deny or stuff down our pain because that doesn't go away it it will come out in some way or another and it will fester and it can really lead to very very damaging um, consequences and so again yes there is danger um, in dealing in facing our emotions but I think it's far more dangerous not to face them. I think the key is to find godly ways of dealing with them, healthy ways of dealing with them. And so, you know, this is obviously a massive topic. I can't, um, you know, I can't give a comprehensive guide on how to deal with your pain in a healthy way in just this short episode. But again, my advice, overall advice is don't run from your pain. Don't run from your pain. And just really quick, Um, Here at the end of the episode, I'll give you just a few very practical steps. They're very simple. Uh, Maybe to some of you, these are super obvious, but just in case they're not, um, I think it starts with just acknowledging our pain, just admitting that we're hurting or we're afraid or we're angry or sad or whatever it is. I think, you know, healing doesn't begin until we're even able to recognize it, right? If we're in denial, if we're not willing to admit that, you know, we're in pain, then we can't go anywhere, honestly, like it just the pro it's a non starter, right? Like, we have to start by just even being willing to acknowledge that. Um, And then from there, I would encourage you to grow in your emotional literacy, emotional intelligence. Um, If I can use that term, you know, for me, again, like I said, I didn't grow up learning any of that you know i think it's a lot more people are a lot more aware of these kind of concepts now and there's a lot more resources and conversation around it Um, for me i didn't you know i if the conversation was there i'm a gen xer you know so for you fellow gen x gen xers out there you can confirm or you know or you can uh, correct me if i'm wrong here but like i don't feel like there was a ton of this kind of Um, information out there or not that there wasn't information but it wasn't just as uh, normalized uh, to talk about these kind of things Um, and for me even just you know growing in emotional literacy like even I remember the first time I saw like you know they have these lists of like different emotions you know and I didn't even realize there were so many emotions out there (laughs) you know like so it just helped me give me language to describe you know, some of the things that I was feeling or that I know I had felt in the past um, and just, un, you know, gain more understanding around emotions and how they affect us. Um, you know, and, and the third step I would say is, you know, seek out appropriate and helpful resources. And those are, you know, those couldn't be books or podcasts or whatever, but they can also be like people. I think healing often comes um in some level of community and so maybe that's with a therapist you know i am all for therapy and um, i'm not saying it's a cure-all for everything but i think it can be helpful i'm not one of those christians who believes you know it's wrong to go to therapy (laughs) okay um you know it might be it might be a pastor it might be um, just a trusted friend honestly or a mentor you know there's i don't think there's just one resource that fits you know it's not one size fits all you know i think there's a lot of helpful um, resources but i will say you know i think the lord designed us to um, walk in community to live in community Um, and i i do believe that a lot of times healing is found in um, as we walk with others and of course that's scary because usually we get hurt um, in walking with people 
Um, but that's just, you know, the way the Lord has designed it, you know, and we can't escape that, even though it is a little scary, um, especially if we've been, you know, deeply wounded or even abused, you know, in the context of relationships. So again, it's, I'm not saying everyone out there is going to be a safe person or a helpful person for you to walk with, but, um, you know, I pray that, you know, you will, that the Lord will bring to you people that can be helpful to you in your journey and in your healing. And then my last step, um, which is just simply as with, you know, as with everything to invite the Lord into your pain, invite the Lord into your process, invite the Lord into your journey. Um, you know, we, we are, we are all limited, you know, in our understanding and in our wisdom, but, um, you know, I always li like to invite the resources of heaven into whatever situation I'm dealing with. But of course, that includes, you know, my emotional um, life and my pain. So um, I want to encourage you, you know, again, my advice, don't run from your pain. You know, we have plenty of people out there, hurt people, hurting people. We don't need more of that. You know, this world is... Uh, is full of hurting people and they need people who can lead them um, to the Lord, who I believe is the only one who can ultimately heal us. Um, but a lot of times we are, we don't have the ability to lead others there if we haven't gone there ourselves and if we're not willing to continually go there ourselves. And so um, the journey, it's worth it just for your own sake and for your own well-being. Um, but there are benefits too in that I think it helps you to learn how to help others too and so and how to minister to others and so again this is our fifth episode in this series is my advice for you don't run from your pain and for those of you out there who are um, particularly hurting even right now um, I just pray that the Lord will encounter you um, that the Lord will bring the right resources into your life whether it's you know a book or a podcast or um or a person um, i just pray that the lord will bring the right resources into your life and above all else that he will um, place his loving hand upon you and guide you to your healing and so um, i hope that this has been helpful to you as always thank you for listening god bless you and we'll see you next time